Psalms 86. Let's just look at verse 7 to begin with. Psalms 86, 7. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for you will answer me. Amen. Father, thank you for this word. For the word is truth, the word is life. This word is what sustains us. This word is a promise. I will call on you, and you will answer. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We talked about during this week during Bible school, we talked about the fact that in the relationship with God, it requires two people. It requires you, and it requires God. In a relationship with any person, it requires two people. Both of you give, both of you receive. It's not a one-sided thing. Here the psalmist is saying unto us, I want a relationship with God, and I will call upon him and he will do his thing. That's a relationship. I want us to look tonight at, th at this particular book and I want a chapter. And I want us to think about David. And he shows us in these few verses that he is a blessed man. He's a blessed man. If I were to, to ask you tonight, how many of you are blessed? Every one of you would raise your hands. You'd have to. So then I say, okay, now tell us why you're blessed. Give me one word why you're blessed. And you just blurt out stuff because we've done this before. And you tell me why you're blessed. You see, if I sit here and, and, and I say to you, how many of you tonight are not blessed? And tell me why you're not blessed. We wouldn't want to do that. Because we claim we're blessed. But then we have trials and tribulations that come up and all of a sudden we just forget that we're blessed. God, God says, Danny, I'm going to take care of you and I, I proclaim that and I share it by faith and then as things start happening, I don't get taken care of the way I think I should get taken care of and I begin to get discouraged. He's already given me a word I received the word, I spoke the word, but now all of a sudden I'm speaking another word because I haven't felt the blessings like I thought I should get the blessings. And then we go through this period where it's downtime, where we get discouraged and we get upset and we, we get to wanting to quit and we want to, all this stuff, you know, and we get depressed and discouraged and everything. And then all of a sudden, somewhere along the way, God speaks that word to us again and we get a hold of that word again, and now we bring the word forth again. God is going to bless me. God is going to keep me. God is going to provide for me. And we're real encouraged. Over here was real encouraged. Over here we're real encouraged. But there's that valley. Why is it that we as Christians choose to go through that valley? Why is it that we lose sight of the fact that we're blessed? You remember I used to tell you that God called me here to this church? And I, I said, and you couldn't run me off if you wanted to? And see, that's the truth. Now, God could use you to move me. But you and yourself, you and the devil, couldn't run me off if you wanted to. Now, I could give in under discouragement. And I could give in under a pity party and I could look somewhere else for greater pastures and greener pastures and, and flee somewhere else to get out of this mess. But you didn't run me off. Yeah, I chose to. Or I can stand here and I can say, God, you brought me here. You put me here and I'm not going anywhere until you move me. When you get ready to move me, I'll be glad to go. Not that I want to, but I'll be glad to go to obey your voice. But in the meantime, God help me focus, stay focused on the point that you brought me here and all the demons in hell cannot remove me as long as I trust the fact that God put me here. Because greater is the one that brought me here and put me here and keeps me here than anything that would come against me and try to move me outside of God's will. Well, that applies to you. It applies to everything about your life. 
It applies to who you are. It applies to where you are in your life. It applies to your mate that you have. It applies to the job that you have. It applies to the children that you have. It applies to every promise God has ever made to you in your entire life. It is yours. God does not renege. He does not go back on his promises. What was yea and amen yesterday is yea and amen today and we're yea and amen tomorrow if we can just trust God to continue to lead us in our lives. Amen. Amen. So why do we have these periods of down? Why do we get discouraged? Why do we, nobody loves me, nobody cares. I think I go out and dig a few worms so I'll have something to eat. Why do, we, why do we do that? And then two or three days later, we're just glorifying and praising God in the high heavens. But in the meantime, we have sent discouragement out to people all around us. We send discouragement out to our children. We send discouragement out to those that are close to us. Because we have these moments and then we get up and then we praise God and we forget of the people that we may have hurt or led the wrong way during those times of down and hurt. And too many times we don't go back and ask God to forgive us for those times. Do you understand that? To get into those attitudes and those ways is wrong. And we have hurt God and we've probably hurt other people. And then we get out of it and we start glorifying God again. Well, somewhere along there, you need to stop and turn around and look and say, Father, forgive me for the way I acted. I knew better than that. I knew better than that. It helped me not to do it again. That keeps us strong. But what made David such a character as that? What were the things in David's life that made him a winner? That made him one? Go back and read the Psalms and you'll see where David is always praising God. He's always lifting up God, always glorifying God. He has bad moments. But then you'll see him turn those moments around and use them for God's glory. Every one of us in here tonight are blessed. Amen? Amen. Say this with me. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed blessed beyond measure. measure. Because of God. God. That's exactly what David is doing here. David is blessed. And he wants all of us to know he's blessed. So he takes time in these few verses here to give us a picture of why he is blessed. What do you tell people when you tell them you're blessed? Have you ever stopped and listened to yourself? When, some, when you go to testify to somebody and you want to tell them why you're so blessed, sometimes listen to what you're saying. I'm blessed because I have a wonderful family, and that is a blessing. I'm blessed because I have a wonderful wife, that's a blessing, a wonderful husband, I'm blessed because I have wonderful children. I'm blessed because we have a great church. I'm blessed because I have a great job. I'm blessed because I have a wonderful house to live in. I'm blessed because I have food on the table. I am a blessed person. Listen to yourself talk and you'll find out something. We fail to give God the credit that he deserves and he wants. I am blessed. I am blessed. We sing that song. We sing that song. Every day when I rise, I'm blessed. When I go to bed, I'm blessed. Does that mean that every day that you have everything you want, you have all your needs supplied, that when you rise up in the morning that you've had a great night's sleep and you get up out of bed and something doesn't hurt? Is that what it means? And when I go to bed at night, I'm blessed because I've had a wonderful day and everything went my way and all the stars lined up in heaven and I got a raise and this is busy. <laughs> You, you, sing, you, Stephanie, we, we sing that song some more. We'll sing it again. And when we do, you're going to find out this guy that wrote the song is telling you he's blessed irregardless of the world. I'm just blessed. That's what we fail to do. Do you understand? That's why a lot of us don't want to testify in church. Because somebody tells over here about how God gave them this great, wonderful job or how God saved them from this drastic wreck or how God provided this, that, and the other. And we think, I don't have anything to match that. <laughs> So we don't want to share. Oh, God bless the church, the person that will stand up in this church and simply say, I am blessed because God's alive and sit down. Because there's no blessing any greater than that. Because he lives, I can live also. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You need to learn that. We all need to be able to say that together. I'm blessed. And let other people see it in the way that we live and the way that we act, the way that we look and all that we do. I'm blessed. And you say, do you love the Lord? Yes. Are you a blessed person? Yes. 
How are you blessed? Look at my job. No, look at me. I have a God that loves me. I find myself getting up at times and I'll say, God, I want to thank you for a good night's rest. I didn't sleep all night. I had some ups and downs, but thank you for a good night's rest. A good night's rest does not depend on whether you sleep all night long. It doesn't. God, I want to thank you because of my health. That doesn't mean you have perfect health. I thank God all the time for my health. And my health is not up to par according to some people's health. But I can care less. My health that he's given me, I can still walk. I can still talk. I can still look. I can still see. God, thank you for what I do have. That is my thank you because you're God and you rule my life and you take me and you show me and you share with me. You make me, you mold me. So what I am, God, I thank you because it is your choice for me and I praise you. I am blessed beyond measure. Now I may walk out of here with a limp, but I'm blessed beyond measure. Jacob, it says in the book of Hebrews, he stood holding his cane. Boy, I love that picture. Even there where he's being praised in the book of Hebrews, he's having to hold on. But I, he was blessed and he's holding on to his cane. I don't care how I have to stand. I don't care if I have to sit and it's necessary I sit, not just a choice. I don't care. As long as I can glorify and praise God, I thank him for what I have. You understand that? That's what David's trying to say here. That's what he's trying to tell us in these verses. So he says, God is my guide. I'm blessed. He is my guide. And he said, because God is so wonderful in my life, I have these perks. I have these blessings. And I have them because of God. So David is saying, I am blessed because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I am blessed because he is my God. I am blessed because he is my healer. I am blessed because he is my salvation, my redeemer. He is my Lord, my Savior. I am blessed because he is this. And because he is this, he gives me this. We focus on this and we fail to talk about God. David says, because of this, he gives me this. Now, let's look at what David says he gives me. First praise and glory goes to God and God alone. And then he says, because of that. He begins in verse 1. David says, bow down thy ear, O Lord, hear me. For I am poor and needy. David is not saying here, I am poor and don't have any money. I'm needy and I'm out on the streets begging for food. David says, Lord, I got a situation in my life. And here's what I want you to think about tonight. How do you get God's attention? Praising him. You ever have a time where you praise him and you don't think he's listening? Sometimes we can walk in a room and, and I, I can say, Sierra, Sierra, hey. Dude, she looks at me. I got something I want to tell her. Well, I want her to listen. And I want her to be looking at me. I'm trying to tell you something. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> See, we do that sometimes to our kids. Our kids we want to get their attention. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Because the first time it doesn't work. We want to make sure that what we're fixing to spew out, they're going to hear because we've got it all stored up and we want it to come out. And we want it to erupt on them. So look at me. <laughs> hey. Yeah. That's exactly what David is saying here. This is just not, hey, God, I want to talk to you about something. Baby. He looks in this verse and he simply says, bow down thy ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and needy. David is saying, he, I'm in a situation in my life. God, I need, hey, hey. Don't you dare yell at God. Why? When the yell is in desperation, God hears. We're not screaming at God. We're not demanding something we're going to give him. We're asking, I am serious. God, help me. David is in desperate need. I am poor and needy. And he's saying, God, look at me. Bend down a little bit. I want to speak in your ear. Turn toward me. Look at me, God, I'm poor and needy. And David said, because he is God, he does that very thing. 
See, sometimes God wants to know if we're really serious in our prayer. We just drop down, thank you, Lord, for this food, amen. Dig in, pass the biscuits, and I want some gravy. And there's no prayer there. there there's no seriousness there. And God just looks at us, he says, I, I'm still on the first word. Did you, what did you say? And God wants us to hear. Sometimes we need to be more serious about even our prayer for food. God, thank you for this food. And sometimes we really need to get serious because it doesn't look so good. God, really thank you for this food. I really do. Keep me from getting sick. You know? See, we got to get serious. And David was crying out to God in desperation. And there are times in mind in your life where we need to be desperate unto God. And David said, now because he is God, I can cry out to him. And he knows what I'm serious because I'm going to get God's attention. I want him to listen. I want him to hear. Oh, how I wish, how I wish I had the courage and the boldness to call out to some of you when I was preaching, when I am preaching. Oh, of course I would. When those eyes get heavy and you, you know, I'm, I'm sitting over here and I'm giving a word that's fire. I'm giving a word from God and you're sleeping on God. I'd like to call you out. I really would. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> And when I see you take those phones and, oh, I'd like to call you out. I would. I'd like to call out fire from heaven to destroy your phones. What I'd like to, I'd like to see, I'd like to see smoke just coming up from your pew. That's what I'd like. I'd like to call you out. Hey! When you get up and go to the bathroom for the fifth time, Oh, I, hey, can't you wait? <laughs> I got to go too. Bear it with me. <laughs> See, I'd like to get your attention. And God wants us to do the same thing. He wants to know that we care enough. And David said, I found a relationship with God where I can call out to God in all desperation. And he hears me. Oh, I'm a blessed man that I've got a God that hears me when I call out. And he says, because he does, my God is faithful and he gives me wonderful blessings. Watch this, verse 5. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all of them that call upon you. Listen now. David is telling you he's blessed because of God and all that God is. And he says, because I'm blessing him, he's given me these things. And he says, what he gives me here, he says, God, you are good. God, you are ready. At any moment when I cry out, you are ready. And you're ready to forgive me of any sin that I commit. You're ready. God, I thank you because of the forgiveness that you've given me in my life. I am not perfect. I am not what I'm going to be. And God, I thank you that when I mess up, that you're there when I call on you, and I say, Father, forgive me, that you're quick to forgive. And you have mercy that is plenteous. It goes beyond measure. And God, you have shown your forgiveness to me over and over and over. You have shown your mercy to me over and over and over. Oh, I am a blessed man because God is my Savior. You seen anything yet? God, I thank you for my palace that's so big. <laughs> I thank you for the most beautiful wives that I have. I thank you, God, because of my horses and my army. You're so awesome, God. I am blessed. No, I am blessed because I have a father who forgives me of my sins and whose mercy is great and plenteous, and he pours it out on me every single day. Wow. What a God. What a God. David says, I just want you to know that God gives me benefits and blessings and I'm so thankful for God. He's not thanking us. He's not saying I'm thankful for these things. I'm thankful for God and he gives me these things. Then he says, God, I want to thank you for your awesome prayers. In verse 7, 
in the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for you will answer me. Oh, David said, I have a God that is always alert, a God that's always listening, a God that is always there. And because I serve that God, when I call upon him here, he blesses me by listening and hearing my call and then answering my prayer. Not just hearing, answering my prayer. Amen. Do you see it? Is it clear as mud? I'm blessed because of my Savior. And I'm blessed because he is my Savior. And when I'm in trouble, I cry out. And he hears me. And he answers my prayers. When is the last time that you testified and said, I want to thank God for answering my prayers? You see... That almost sounds like you're saying there have been times that God didn't answer my prayer, but I thank him because he finally did this time. You see? What if your prayer is, I want to thank my God who loves me enough that he hears when I cry unto him and he answers my prayers. Because God always answers your prayers. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But he always answers your prayer. And just because it hasn't come in your time span doesn't mean God hasn't answered your prayer. It doesn't mean that God has not answered your prayers because maybe it was that five days ago I prayed for patience and God is still working on me and now 10 days or five days later I'm over here and I'm thinking about something I've just asked God for and God has given me patience that I prayed for five days ago and I don't even notice it. God's always answering prayer. So we need to make sure that when we testify that we tell people, I serve a God that loves me enough that he lets me pray. And oh, by the way, when he prays, he hears what I pray and he answers my prayer. You know why God hears your prayer? Because he's alive. Amen. We're blessed. Tell somebody, I'm blessed because my God is alive. And since my God is alive, he hears my prayer. And if he hears my prayer, he answers my prayer. I am blessed because of God. You see how it works? We're not thanking him for these things over here. These are blessings. These are benefits. These are perks that we get because of God. Just changing our attention a little bit. Next, he says, I am blessed because of the supreme, unmatchable power of God. Wow. In verse 10, he says, for thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. God alone. He says, I thank you because I know for a fact that you have unmatchable power. I am blessed because I serve God. And because I serve God, my relationship is to be blessed and to tell him of how great he is. And when I do that, that's my part of the relationship. And then his part of the relationship is to take that power that he has and he sends it down over here and he keeps me with that power. Every force of hell that comes against me, my God has the power to overcome it. If I'll just believe it. It's, I don't, I, I'm not so thankful for what he's doing here and how he does all these things. I'm thankful because he's God and his power is unmatchable in this universe. Wow. Can't you see that? Because, see, if we come over here and focus on these things, what happens the moment he doesn't do it our way? What happens the moment he lets us lose to teach us another lesson? Then we'll begin to doubt. We won't have a testimony then. Because, bless God, I just made you help me that I just get to see because, you know, I've had it so bad. No, we need to get our eyes off of this mess over here, get them back up here on the God that can do all things anytime, anywhere, any way to anybody he wants to. And my God is able and he would come at the right time and I thank him for it. We are blessed. But we're blessed when we focus on what we're blessed with. Next, he says, I want to bless God for his strength. I want to show you something right here and I want you to follow this. 
David says, I want to bless God for his strength. I, I, want to, I, I worship him. I glorify him. I'm blessed because of him. And because of him, I get his strength. But watch what he says in verse 16. Oh, turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of your handmaid. Now, I want to read the first of that verse again. I want you to listen to it. Listen to what he's saying. Turn unto me, have mercy upon me, and give your strength unto me. Another, another translation says, turn to me, have mercy, give me your servant strength, save me. Now, when you and I pray, most of the time we say things like this. Father, give me strength to make it through the day. Right? Nothing wrong with that prayer. That's what we're praying. God, I've got a great trial coming up in my future. I can see it. Give me strength that I won't fail you. God, give me strength that I can hold on until the end. God, give me strength to do whatever. And fill the blank in. We do that all the time. Nothing wrong with that prayer. We're praying it. But that's not what David's doing. David learned something about God. When David fully understand, understood who God was, when he fully understood this, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. When he began to read the scripture and the scripture began to be enlightened, when David understood things about God, for the greatness of God, the majesty of God, the power of God, and the strength of God, he said, I am blessed because of my God. My God is personal. My God. See, this is not Mike Zachary's God. This is not Joey Michelle's God. It's not Richard's God. This is my God. It's a personal thing. We need to make it personal with God. My God. My God. Because there's a difference in saying the God of the universe and my God. See, it's mine. My God. I'm thankful that my God has all power. So David learned, I'm not asking my God to give me a tenth of his strength so I can make it through the day. I'm not asking my God to give me 50% of his strength so I can overcome this hurdle in front of me. David's not saying, God, give me some of that strength. David is saying here in this verse, God, give me your strength. Let it soak in for a moment. God, give me strength to make it through the day. See? I need a portion of your strength to make it through the day. I need, God, give me your strength that I can persevere through this horrible tragedy that I'm facing. So we're asking for a portion of God's strength. Nothing wrong with that if that's the way you want to pray. But David understood something and a key to heaven unlocked something in his heart that he had never seen before. And David said, God, give me your strength. I don't want some of it. I want all of it. Give me your strength. David had already learned this because he goes against Goliath, a man that he was great outnumbered, outmatched with, and the Goliath says, you dog. I'll destroy you today. I will. I will destroy you today. David said, oh, no, you won't, because I come in the name of the Lord. I come in the strength of the Lord. He's not giving me the strength to, uh, to beat you today. He's not doing that. God himself has given me all of his strength, and his strength in me is going to knock you out. See, David learned that as a little boy. We, we ask piecemeal because we want piecemeal. But God wants us to have the whole plate. He doesn't want us to have a little bit of healing. He wants us to have all of it. He doesn't want us to have a little bit of faith. He wants us to have all of it. He said the faith of a grain of mustard seed can move a mountain. Big deal. He gave me more faith than that. I want all of it. God, give me your strength. And I would encourage you to begin to pray different because when you begin to pray different and you understand that you are blessed because of God and because of God, he will give us his strength if we ask for it. 
If we want to go to McDonald's and say, God, take me to McDonald's, he'll take you to McDonald's and get you a greasy hamburger. But if you say, God, I don't want that. I want to go somewhere and I want a full meal and I want a, ham I want a steak and I want baked potato and I want lobster and I want, God, I want that. If you say that, God will do that. See, we ask God for little things. Just give me a little bit of your strength to get through today, God. And tomorrow I'll ask you for a little bit more. No, God says, I want, I've got reservoirs of strength. And if you'll ask me, I'll just become in you everything that I am. Why did Jesus say, the things that you have seen me do, you can do also, and even greater things than these shall you do. And I've often said, how can we do anything greater than what Jesus did when he walked on this earth? I can do the same things he did. It will not be me doing it. It's because I've asked for the power of God, the strength of God. He has placed that in me. Now God is working through me and doing the same things he always did and even greater things because we have yet to see what God can do. That's why I said even greater things. We can limit ourselves to the things God did that's recorded in the Bible and say, I want to do these things. But God said, no, I've got things you've never seen before. <laughs> Don't you want all of it? And when you want all of it, you say, God, give me your strength. David says, I am so blessed. And finally, David says, because he has helped me. He has helped me. One of the perks in the last verse. Show me a token for good. That they which hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because thou, Lord, has helped me. And you, Lord, have comforted me. He says, show me a sign of your goodness. When my enemies look, they will be ashamed. You, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. See, if there's one thing that we need in this life, it is to be, let other people see how blessed we are. Not what we wear, not how we look on the outside, not the car we drive, the house we live in, the food that we have. Not how much money we've got in the bank. That's here today and gone tomorrow. Not any of those things. People need to see Jesus Christ living in us. They need to hear us testifying of the goodness and greatness of God. Of the glory and the majesty of God. Of the strength and the power of God. That God hears and God listens and God answers. They need to see us praising God. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed because of God. And because I treat God that way, because I understand I am blessed, then God pours out on me these things. Healing, deliverance, patience, kindness, gentleness, food, water, clothing. Don't be so caught up that we're thankful for the things and not thankful for the God that sends them. The world is sick and tired of people talking about the things because they're bragging. Let's turn our attention to God and use every chance that we had to testify for God. David said it very well. Show, thee, show me a token for good. In other words, God use me as a token to show somebody else the glory of God. A token. All of our kids or our kids in Bible school got tokens they won an award for different things. Outstanding Christian, outstanding brat, greatest whatever. They got all these tokens. And, and they, they had a little token they wore right there. Wrapped around their neck. And they proudly displayed that. What would you win? And they stick it in your face. A token. David said, God, let me be shown as a token for you. God, let my picture hang around your neck. And God, let your picture hang around my neck. Let me be shown as a token for you. You ever thought about that? So wherever I go, whatever I do, people look at me because I'm wearing a token. And what is that token? God. And when they see me, they see God. They don't see me in my clothes. They don't see me in my hair. They don't see me in my house and me and my family. They see God. We've got to learn to show them God first. And I have everything that I have and I am what I am because I am blessed. I am blessed that he is my savior. Does that make sense to you? Good. Father, we love you and we sure do thank you. What an awesome God you are. Forgive us because we don't recognize you sometimes. 
Forgive us because we get caught up in the things of this world and say, boy, I'm blessed. I sure got to, and we name things. God, help us to become a token of you that we can be displayed for the whole world to see Jesus Christ lives within me. And I am his child. I'm his servant. He's my God. And I am so blessed. Help us to learn how to do that. It'll put a smile on our face when the devil brings a frown. It'll put joy in our heart whenever we seem to have lost everything. If we can just understand how blessed we are. And what we go through on this earth has nothing to do with it. It's who we serve and whose we are. God, thank you for being my Lord and my Savior and my Master. And I sure do love you. Take us and keep us. Bless us. Meet our needs, God, as we just glorify you and lift you up. We thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen.